Welcome to Michelle's Making Coffee, Crafts, Cookies, and Cocktails. If you like what you see, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell. Don't forget to comment and let me know what you like. Welcome. Happy Friday, everybody. If you didn't know, today is National Blonde Brownie Day. So in honor of that, we're going to make blondies for our cookie. The big difference between blondies and brownies is blondies have a great deal of butter in them and no cocoa, and then the brownies have the cocoa powder. That's the biggest difference between the two of them. But they're yummy nonetheless, so we're gonna get started making that. Before we go there, it's coffee time. And French vanilla is the creamer of the day. It's an old standby, but yummy nonetheless. So let's make it a great day and get to crafting. For our blondie recipe, we're going to need a brownie pan or an eight by eight, nine by nine square pan, greased and lined with parchment paper and a large mixing bowl. You'll need butter, two eggs, all purpose flour, baking powder and salt, brown sugar and vanilla. You'll begin by melting the butter. Once that's done, you mix in the sugar. This entire recipe can be mixed by hand using a fork. Mix well, add the eggs, continue to mix well, then add the vanilla and continue to mix well. The flour, baking powder, and salt should be all sifted together. You'll add the dry ingredients next a little bit at a time, stirring well and scraping the sides of the bowl as you go along. Then it's time to add the nuts. Of course, if you don't care for nuts, you may omit them, but add the nuts next. This is making a fairly thick batter. So when you uh, pour it into the pan, you do have to work a with it a little bit to get it spread out evenly. I sprinkled chocolate chips on the top of mine. You can omit this if you prefer. You're going to bake it in an oven that's been preheated to 350 degrees for about 30 minutes. You want to watch till it's golden brown around the edges. We like ours a little crispy on the edges. Our first craft is a windmill planter. I picked up the windmill sign at Dollar Tree in the garden section. The little box came from Dollar Tree also, but I already had that. You can see here, I put the sign on the box and bent the sides a little bit so I could tell where to mark it off at. I wanted the sign to be exactly the size of the box. I then took my Rust-Oleum chalk paint in linen white and painted all sides of the box and the inside of the box. While the box was drying, I took my 10 snips and cut the welcome sign. I also um, used a rubber mallet to kind of pound down the edges as they bent up a little bit when I was snipping them. Next, I took the antique wax and using a dry brush technique, I gave the box a little brushing to distress it, and I did the same on the windmill sign. Next, I attached the sign to the box using E6000. I set a jar of paint on top of it while it was drying. Once it was dry, I cut floral foam to fill the box and took some flower picks that I purchased at Dollar Tree to arrange some flowers in the box. I had roses and a few other types of flowers and I just kind of played around with it and did have to pull some out and trim them up a little bit as I went along.
I used floral moss to fill in a little bit underneath the flowers on the front side. The back side was pretty well covered and you couldn't see the foam, but behind the windmill, the foam was a little bit visible and the moss covered it nicely. I decided also the two long strands of leaf that were out on each side, I didn't really like, so I took those off. But there you have it. Our next craft is a Valentine plaque. I had purchased a wall hanger at a thrift shop it was made out of wood. It had this as the back piece of it. So I removed the other boards and the bow that was on it and filled in the holes and then gave it two coats of my Rust-Oleum chalk paint in linen white. Once that dried completely, I used painter's tape to mark off striped sections. Now I've never really painted stripes before, so I thought I'd give this a try. I'm using the painter's tape as my guide uh, to place the stripes evenly apart. I had also um, been told that if you use your base color and paint over the edges of the painter's tape before you paint your stripes, that it decreases the bleeding of the paint underneath the tape. And of course, being a little impatient waiting for the paint to dry, I take out my handy heat gun. I now take my red chalk paint to paint the stripes. Of course, I use my heat gun again to help dry the paint but you want to remove your painter's tape before it's completely dry. And I did that and then continued with the heat gun to dry it up. There were only a couple of little areas that needed a touch up, so I was really happy with the work I'd done. I'm going to do a vinyl cutout of the word love, so I'm double checking my measurements before doing that. I then printed out the word love in pink and applied it to the sign but I didn't really like the pink and decided to change it to white. I had to do a little touch up when I removed love, so I decided to go ahead and cover it all completely with Mod Podge to give it a better surface for applying the new vinyl in case I had to remove it also. I played around with embellishing using these small foam hearts, but I preferred the larger corrugated ones so I used some glue dots to adhere the hearts to the plaque. Next, using my Apple Barrel black paint I, and the dry brush technique, I gave the edges and the entire plaque a light brushing with my paint. This gave nice definition to the word love. And there you have it, the Valentine plaque. Next is a really easy winter sign. I used an old frame that I already had that the glass had broken on, but I thought silver was perfect for this. I used a piece of cardstock I picked up at Hobby Lobby that had snowflakes on it. And then on the Cricut machine, I cut out vinyl letters that said, silver white winters that melt into springs. I place the vinyl lettering on the cardstock and put it inside the frame, as easy as that. A simple little sign to add some winter decor. Our final project of the day is a fruit and vegetable caddy that I made using a garden trellis from Dollar Tree and a little storage basket that I actually already had. I've had it for a long time, but they do sell them at Dollar Tree as well. I began by folding up the stake portion on the trellis and attaching the basket to that base using E6000. I used my clamps to tighten that up while the E6000 was drying. I also applied zip ties for a little extra reinforcement and put additional E6000 on top of that.
Next, to make the sign portion, I used a piece of packing styrofoam that had come in something we had received. And I learned that you can actually sand styrofoam down. And I did that on all the edges and then painted everything with the Rust-Oleum chalk paint in linen white. I then used my black chalk paint to distress the edges and across the plank, and I thought this made it look more like wood. I checked the dimensions again before cutting out my stencil design on the Cricut. That was a first time for me. You weed away what you normally keep to make a stencil but I managed to get it done. Uh, it's a little tricky getting it to stick to styrofoam, but with a little patience and uh, working with it, I was able to do it and get it all pressed down. Next, using a round foam stencil brush and my black chalk paint, I did an up and down dabbing motion on the stencil. It's important that you do very light coats so that it doesn't bleed underneath the stencil. This is really a first for me. I have not had a lot of luck with stencils. I tried when I was a teenager and it just didn't go well but I was quite happy this turned out pretty decent. I dried it using the heat gun and then removed the stencil. And then I had to weed out the small pieces in the center of the letters. I actually think this turned out pretty well. What do you think? And I, I'm sorry, I said black chalk paint, but it was actually apple barrel black paint that I used. Now using Rust-Oleum, spray paint. I took my basket and trellis outside and spray painted it two coats. And then I decided to make a messy bow for the top of the trellis. And I did this using some buffalo check ribbon it cut into six inch strips. I removed the wire from this ribbon uh, because I wanted the ribbon to fall kind of loosely around. I did use the wire to tie up the center of the bow, but um, I did not leave the wire in the ribbon. I just alternated the red and black plaid and the white and black plaid and tied it all up, cinched it tight with the wire in the center and fluffed it. I tied the bow to the top left corner, and now it's time to attach the sign to the trellis. And I did this by pushing a skewer through the styrofoam to make two holes on each side and tied it off using zip ties. I then took some jute twine and wrapped it around the center of the bow a few times and tied it in a knot on the back. I then applied a little hot glue to the back of the knot and the back of the zip ties just to make things a little more secure. And there you have it, our fruit and vegetable basket. And now it's time for a refreshing cocktail. Today, we're going to make a Washington apple teeny. I learned how to make this while I was on a cruise recently and I attended a martini uh, tasting seminar. For this, you're going to need Crown Royal whiskey, an apple liqueur, cranberry juice, and of course, our shaker with crushed ice and our glass chilling. You add the Crown Royal and the apple liqueur and cranberry to the shaker, all in equal portions. So an ounce, 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 two ounces, two ounces, two ounces, however you would like to make it. Next, you're going to shake, shake, shake until it's well chilled 
and then you're gonna pour it into a well-chilled glass. The only thing left to do is enjoy. Well, folks, that's it for another week. I really do appreciate you joining me. Next week, at the end of the video, we're gonna have an announcement of some great and exciting things that we're gonna do in the month of February. So don't forget to tune in next Friday and stay tuned all the way through to the end of the video so you can hear the announcement. In the meanwhile, subscribe if you haven't already, share with your family and friends, give me a thumbs up, and don't forget to comment and let me know what you'd like to see. All of those things will help my channel grow and I really do appreciate it. In the meanwhile, let's make it a great week and don't forget to take time to stop and smell the coffee.